Okay, this is the Chapters Wrap Home Edition. This is the 36th straight night. We're doing a show from home. All the other shows were in studios, radio or cable TV studios. And Stephanie, I know we just finished our other show. And again, you're doing double time, actually doing triple time because you've got something going on later tonight. Yeah, I've been going since 9.30 this morning. So it's going to be a 12-hour day for me. I, I, I shoved a sandwich in my mouth in about five minutes Barely had time to even go to the bathroom today. I've not eaten dinner. I, I This has been a, like a crazy day, but it's it's good. It's all good stuff. Well, I got my good friend Benoit on deck here, but tell people a little bit about your book because we might have some new people looking at the show tonight. Uh, well, I, I wrote a book and actually my second book is a workbook called Being Loved Should Heard. It's all about overcoming toxic relationships where I share my story and help other people um, create the, their best lives also. So it's been very busy these past this past five weeks with the um, everyone being in quarantine and having to deal that much more with healthy relationships. So let's stop. Definitely come watch our show Monday, Wednesday, Friday and come ask questions. And do you remember the contract we signed? Every time I put it up on the screen, I get 10 percent of all book sales. Yeah, book. I mean, that's so funny. Steve carries this thing everywhere. We're <laughs> like, who's being mean to Steve? Tell me who that is, because I will take care of them, Steve. All right, I got you covered. I, I take the book, <laughs> you know, and they see that they run for the they run for the fences. <laughs> Good, as they should. They have no that's idea right. my wrath. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, thank you so very much. You're welcome. Have a great show, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice meeting you, Ben. Okay. You too. Have a great one. All right, Benoit is the man. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right, you know. I'm hanging in there. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. How how you how you doing? First of all, is your family safe? Friends, this is a really difficult, challenging, traumatic time for all of us during this pandemic. How are you yeah. coping with this? Um, you know, I am blessed so far. Um, you know, I'm feeling healthy myself. My wife is also healthy and my daughter and all my immediate family. Um, we actually had a loss of a cousin not too long ago, right before all this started happening. And it was kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't know if this was, if, if, if it was COVID or not, but he was a young guy. So we were all kind of wondering. So, you know, that was, we there's been a lot of death, you know, there's been a lot of death in the neighborhood and, and just in general, you know, like people, a good friend of mine named Gerard um, passed away and it was definitely COVID related. Um, so I wanted to, um, mention him, Gerard Hess. He painted this picture of me, um, a while back and he, I, I did a video on YouTube, um, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash studio noir. And you could check it out there, but it's a song we co-wrote and recorded in 2015. Just. We came to my studio real quick. He said, I have this great song. I want to record it. And I had time that day. I brought him here. He's a, he was a harmonica player and a singer. And um, it's called How Many Miles is the Human Race? I'm not going to play it for you, but you can go to YouTube and check it out. And it, it, But there is a song that one of his friends sent me some songs that he um, recorded. And uh, one day he was together a little long time ago. And one of the songs that Gerard covered on the guitar and the harmonica was uh, was blowing in the wind. So I was going to do that as one of my songs today, you know, uh, whenever you're going to have me play, you know, dedicated to Gerard. That, that's great. And I and I must uh, thank our viewers and listeners and new folks because we had to do a, a switch and Rooney for the change of time here. It was supposed to be eight to nine and we uh, had to mix it up a little bit from seven thirty to eight thirty. So we get Benoit a half hour earlier. So uh <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, we have been friends for a long, long time. And, you know, the, the musical journey that you've been on in Long Beach and abroad, I want you to share with our viewers a little bit about, you know, when you first started musically and where that took you up until now even. Well, um, I love Long Beach. I love the beach um, in general. I was drawn here after a long career of um that went from, uh, I, I went to Sachem High School. I grew up, I was born in Patchogue. I, I grew up in Long Island. So basically I'm a Long Island guy um, my whole life. But I did study music at the University of Miami. And uh, that was a great time in my life. Um, I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. And it was, you know, the late 80s, early 90s when, uh, you know, hair metal bands were big and stuff. And uh, I was into heavy rock. And I, I, 
I had a band and I, I was writing songs and I, I didn't, you know, for college, I went to University of Miami. I ended up studying jazz music, which I loved. I played saxophone. And so I was down there for four years, graduated, came back to New York, started playing shows in New York City and then uh, got involved with several groups that took me into all sorts of awesome situations. I got to record in studios and play gigs around the U.S. and around the world. Um, and then after that long career, I, you know, I felt like I, I, I needed almost like to retire. I came to Long Beach uh, in 2007 um, and I just started rebuilding my life. Um, I had been through a series of relationships and, you know, for one reason or another, they didn't work out. And I was just trying to find myself find my musical path. And I wound up in Long Beach, which is a great thing for me. And uh, just started playing little gigs here and there and started building my repertoire as a singer and, and a songwriter as well. Put together a band called Benoit and the Long Beach All Stars in about 2010, 11, something like that. 2011, maybe 2012, even. I don't know. I think it was 2011 because I had already been married. They weren't, some of those guys weren't even at my wedding, like Mike and John and, and Dave. We were all great friends after I got married and after we met and started playing together. And that's how we met. Um, Sandy hit in 2012 and that band, um, you know, was playing a lot around town, like a lot, like four, five times a week. I was trying to book that band, whether in Long Beach or nearby or around Long Island or in the city or whatever. We played in Fire Island. We played in, you know, like just all over. And uh, the Irish Cottage also, um, you know, we played there once in a while. And I used to play there. And, um, you know, recently uh, uh, Kathleen McNulty passed. And I also want to dedicate a, a song to her during this show. So, um, you know, again, thanks to the McNulty family. They they had the Long Beach All-Stars come and play after Sandy every Monday at the Irish Cottage. And it was a real wonderful, magical time um, in my career and, and uh, real bonding experience. And that's when we were working together on Halftime Howie Show and... Um, and you asked uh, you and Howie if I would partake in benefit concerts uh, for Sandy, uh, which we did. And we uh, started off at Guys and Dolls and we went to Mulcahy's and we did other concert venues. And uh, I had written songs about the storm that were on an album called 11561. Um, and that was um, a really important, wonderful time. Uh, it was a hard time. People were hit. You know, I was just thinking about it today. I, I've kind of lived through three very serious, tragic periods now. Uh, September 11th being one of them, um, you know, Sandy and now this, the COVID quarantine time, right? So it's uh, it's interesting how artists deal with the stuff. You know, I wrote songs for 9-11. I wrote songs for Sandy. I started writing some songs for this too. Um, I'm, I run a music school and, and part of the classes we're doing now with the kids is songwriting and getting their emotions out and um, collaborating through Zoom classes and, uh, you know, like FaceTime. And um, it's been really amazing and, and, and strange. And, uh, you know, uh, but like I've been blessed um, so far. My business is still operating at 50 percent, maybe a little higher. Um, and I was doing really, really, really well before all this happened. And who knows how long it'll it'll last. But, um, you know, um, that's basically it. You know, Steve and I have known each other for a while. I've guest appeared on his show. I appreciate what you do, you know, um, having guests on and uh, featuring social issues and mental health issues. And, uh, you know, it's a really good thing that you do. Well, you know what? When we when we were on that show, Halftime Howie, and then everything, uh, Hurricane Sandy took over. And I remember before that how musically inclined you were, how the connection you had with so many people musically, but just your personality. And you connected, and like you're speaking tonight, so, you know, eloquently, and but also respectfully, and, and, and that you have that um, um, thought of really wanting to give back. And when that happens, for the hurricane, I saw the devastation, not for everybody, but musicians in general, especially in Long Beach and what everybody lost. And they lost their gigs, they lost their homes, they lost their instruments. And, and it was really a devastating time. And then when we all sat down, me, you and Hal, we sat down and said, you know what, 
to help Long Beach. We got to step out of Long Beach because nothing was happening there. And you were all in from the beginning. And you musically, you were kind of like the musical director. And you, we had all these acts. We were at uh, Guys and Dolls and Valley Stream and, and then the Mulcahy's. And it was such an outpouring of love. And all the proceeds went back to back to Long Beach, either through the to the city or to different nonprofits, or specifically with families. So that was, if I look back on things now, I'm so glad we were able to share that experience because um, you're right. We, you know, we've gone through September 11th, we've gone through Hurricane Sandy, now we're going through this. But musically, you've been able to back that up with the feeling of song. So I want to thank you for that support way back when. And now I see you have a beautiful family. I see your postings with, you know, on online, you know, on social media. I just see that you're, you're really happy. And that makes me happy because you're, you're a great guy and you're teaching. You're teaching young people music and you can play so many different instruments. I wish I could just play one of those instruments. But, uh, <laughs> but you, you, you're just a well-rounded person and, and, and you spearhead a lot of projects in Long Beach. So uh, I want to thank you for all that as well. Thank you. Thank you for the recognition and for the invite, you know, to come on the show and promote my music. And, uh, you know, I, you know, this time around, I, because I am a parent and a husband, uh, I guess I, I was a husband back then too, but being, being a parent, um, it, you know, you're responsible for a lot more you, and there's a lot. And with the quarantine, it's not even like being a parent and that like, we're like quarantine. So <laughs> it's a whole other story. And like, there are great people out there doing amazing things. Now I wish I could take more part in, but I'm doing my best to just keep my ship afloat this time around. Like when Sandy hit last time, my studio was intact, all the equipment, everything, nothing got flooded my home that we rented with uh, my wife sammy her apartment that we shared at the time um was fine i mean the basement got flooded so because we were so blessed i was able to go out and help people you know this time around i'm kind of i'm quarantined and there were people out there like i want to shout out dj chef and um who was also a help at mulcahy's and some of those bigger events and he and and a whole bunch of people in Long Beach are doing these birthday parade shout outs. I don't know if you've seen them. Yes. But yes. He, you know, the kids with birthdays or even anyone, really, the elderly, there was a 105 year old woman. And, you know, she was on the cover of the Herald the other day. And like, you know, it's just wonderful to see everybody come together and be like, well, we don't have to just stay in our home. Let's go and let's bring out some joy to people. And uh, there's a lot of people helping out the nurses and the hospitals and the medical centers by um, collecting masks and supplies. Um, my friend Colette Morales and, uh, you know, like I see these people doing things and I'm very proud of them. And um, this time around, it's hard for me to do that because I'm just personally trying to maintain my own sanity. Um, I'm trying to be a father. I'm trying to run a business or two. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep those things going. I'm trying to learn technology and master technology. And and I'm so thankful that, you know, uh, along with all of that, also, I began working on myself more as a person, as a, you know, my spiritual side or through the years, um, a yoga practice that I've been continuing thanks to Bikram Yoga in Long Beach, thanks to Ann. Hayes and Doug and, um, you know, the owners there. And like, I, because I've, and, and I've been doing, I started doing a Bikram yoga um, before Sandy hit and then their studio was wiped out. Then I took a big break. Then I came back in a few years ago and I've been doing it pretty regularly for like three, two, three years. And I'm up to like basically three times a week. And I've been practicing by myself in my, uh, my studio. Um, and it really centers me, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm at a new place in my life. I really enjoy being a father. I really enjoy being a husband. Um, I always wanted to be both of those things. My dream in life was to live near the ocean, play music, and have a family. So all my dreams were, um, you know, I have everything I ever wanted. Um, you know, I have this beautiful Gibson guitar. You know, it's like I have a studio where I can play music and teach people and, and broadcast and do these lessons and do these, uh, you know, I'm just so blessed. So, um, you know, what can I say? I just, um, you know, I wish I could help more. So the, one of the things I could do 
was give this time to you guys and and try to be positive and bring a, a fun positive message because you know times can get dark but um they don't have to be dark you know um we should have faith in um what's going on it's going to bring us to a, a more positive place i i believe that and uh it's unfortunate that people have died it's unfortunate that more people will get sick and will die um but um if we all come together and try to do the next right thing and we just you know we we try to uh distance distance from each other and um you know clean ourselves properly and clean what we're using and uh you know just pay attention pay attention listen to what the government has to offer us um you know governor como i think he's doing a great job you know I, i've been i've been trying to uh stay off tv and not be so plugged into the daily updates i i've literally watched about an hour to two hours worth of tv since this began Okay. Because I know that, I mean, in terms of news, right? I've, I've binged watched Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> like most of us, right? Um, but, um, you know, for me personally, I, I pray, I, um, I reflect, I do yoga, I work, I work, I still work a lot. So, you know, my days, my mornings are, um, you know, I wake up, I, I play with my little girl. I call my work or I do yoga and uh, I, I get online or I teach lessons and I've been using the zoom a lot and uh, utilizing the record to web feature, which is amazing because, you know, being online with classes, like you're really connected. You have to really um, pay attention. You right. know, I'm paying super attention to the student and the student is hopefully paying super attention back. And I'm writing on the screen different things, or I'm sharing content to the screen, and I'm recording the lessons and downloading them, and then posting them on private links so that the students can access them. And I'm so excited about this. Sometimes I sit there and watch the lessons over again, and I I try to better my teaching methods and what I'm showing, how I'm showing it. Um, it's pretty outstanding, you know. Like uh, I've been, and I'm very thankful for those people who continue with the lessons and continue to support their children or themselves um you know so thank you everybody for doing that that's great this is the chapter's wrap we have our special guest ben wine he's holding a guitar there so uh, i'm going to ask you to just kick off a song any any song that you want and uh it's all on you i have a little guitar but i'm not going to play <laughs> this thing i'll leave that up to you <laughs> All right, cool. You know, um, I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> I get so nervous with this stuff still, you know, I was nervous today. Um, let's see if anybody recognizes this one and they can call in and talk to us, right? Cool. and protect us through wave after wave deliver us from flood waters let us live another day the Atlantic crossed the boardwalk traumatize the folks who stay and I pray Lord I God bless us and protect us. This is where we want to stay. Right here in Long Beach, don't let us wash away. So many people 
baby put it on spray and i'm begging you lord i'm begging may long beach stay long live long beach from the east and to the west surfers and the polar bears the musicians and the vets Long live Long Beach, from the cops to the bars. Lord, I love this town. One one five six one. One one five six one. Long live Long Beach from the east and to the west. The surfers and the polar bears, the musicians and the vets. Long live Long Beach from the cops to the bars. Lord, I love this town. One, one. Five, six, one. Sing along with me, everybody out there. Long live Long Beach, from the east and to the west. The surfers and the polar bears, the musicians and the vets. Long live Long Beach, from the cops to the bars. Lord, I love this town. One, 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 five, six, one. Lord, I love this town. One, 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 five, six, one. Lord, I love this town. One, 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 five, six, one. One, 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 five, six, one. Yeah. Nice. You weren't expecting that visual, were you? <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. We didn't plan yeah. that. I love it. I know. I'm just making sure we didn't plan that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Beautiful. I, I, you know, you feel the passion. You know, Long Beach, I don't live there now, and I miss it very much. When I go back there, I used to work there and live there, have lots of friends there. Uh, my daughter graduated from there. It, it's... um. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's the only place in, you know, Long Island with a boardwalk quite like that outside of Jones Beach. But it just has its own character. And you you really bring that out in your music and in the community. Talk about the importance of being in the community, not just musically, but to connect. Because there's a lot of restaurants that come and go there. And you probably played at a lot of those restaurants. But you're also in the center of town a lot. And you ba you bond with different musicians. How important is that for you? Oh, yeah. You know, um, you know, I know a lot of people here, and I love it. I love knowing the people here. The people here are what makes Long Beach so great. There's so many long-time residents and old-time residents and families that have been here for years and years. I think the water and the beach and the boardwalk brings a certain type of individual uh, to come live here and you know, it, it, it bonds. Musicians definitely gravitate here. Um, there's a lot of great musicians in town and um, there's a lot of great restaurants. People like to eat out here and there's a lot of great restaurants. Um, as Arts in the Plaza, um, what I do with, uh, as Ar Arts in the Plaza is Long Beach's weekly um, arts festival. And that's every Saturday through from May through October. So uh, Memorial Day, it usually kicks off through Halloween weekend. 
And um, just to kind of do a big umbrella there, if you go to artsintheplaza.com and you click on sponsors, you'll see some of the best restaurants in town that have supported the arts through Arts in the Plaza, for example. Um, when I came here in 2007, um, I actually had been visiting, I was living in Jamaica, Queens, working there in an after school program at the Queens Gateway um, School, uh, Health Sciences School in an after school program. And I was really enjoying that. Um, I had a roommate and we came down to the beach and I believe it was the inn was having a taco Tuesday. And I was like, I was just like in awe of this like dollar taco deal. You know, we sat out there and uh, enjoyed it. And like, uh, I was like, Long Beach, this place is really cool. And then I'd come out here and I'd bring my guitar and a blanket and just sit on the beach. And I was then the people would come up and say, Hey, man, I'll give you, you know, you want a beer? I'll like, uh, you know, you can play me a song or whatever. And like, so like for me i was like wow this town is pretty awesome this is friendly you know like I, i'd sit out there i'd play my guitar and like meet people and uh uh you know that happened a couple of times and and uh when i had i always thought i might move out here and um i had this in my mind and after a particular breakup um with a particular person who um is a very wonderful person but it just didn't work out i ended up uh looking for a place out here and uh, I found this apartment right behind the laundromat on Kentucky Street, which is now Studio Noir. And um, my family helped me get into this place because I was a little struggling at the time. So shout out to my sister and I love them very much for all the help that they've given me through the years. It's important to talk about such things and to thank our family because, you know, sometimes people don't know. <laughs> there you go. I didn't you know, find that it, either. <laughs> I, I, I feel like people need to know that, you know, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to um, bear the burden. You know, sometimes family needs to help you when you're down, you know, or you have to help family when they're down. And that's part of community, too. And Long Beach is a huge family here. It's like interconnected people. Um, people help me all the time. Now, back to, you know... Or, you know, I moved out here and started meeting people in the community. I have to mention Johanna Matheson. Uh, I met her. She is a big part of the art scene here. And um, she uh, introduced me to several opportunities to play, including Arts in the Plaza, which was on Sundays back in the day. Um, and it was proposed to me to come out. Why don't, you, why don't you come out and play some of your music for a couple hours? And, uh, well, you know, you could put out a tip bucket. And uh, at the time, I didn't have any gigs. I didn't have anything going on out here. I had actually, I used to drive all the way to Brooklyn to do a gig uh, next to Peter Luger's Steakhouse because all my connections were in the city. And um, it took me a long time to kind of develop a sound. And I had a special jazzy thing going on. It was mellow and jazzy. and um, But I wasn't like a pronounced singer, songwriter, performer. Uh, I'm still working on my game. But... You know, I came out here and there were all these guys doing covers like really well, like uh, like uh, Dave Callan and Fred the Human iPod and, you know, Matt Wall. And, and uh, you know, there's a bunch of local guys here. For, forgive me if I don't mention your name, but, um, you know, they were doing the gigs, Taylor Searing and Ralph Palladino and whoever else was out here already living here for a while. And uh, they were doing their acoustic solo things in the in the bars and. I didn't have that repertoire and uh, it was hard for me to get a gig. So I used to go all the way to Brooklyn to, to play. So back to the arts in the plaza thing. So here's another example of sometimes you got to do something for free to get something out of something bigger and better. Sometimes right. you, you know, it's not, you know, I, I remember people criticizing my choices of playing in cafes in New York city for tips or, you know, whatever. But I also remembered Hiram Bullock uh, coming to um, the University of Miami where I studied and he gave a lecture. And these are the type of things that we have to pay attention to when somebody who's done it already comes before us. Now, he ended up getting a gig with Sting from doing gigs and, and played, I think, on the on one of those late night shows also, you know. Wow. 
but like he got the gig from doing free stuff with other people that led right. to something that led to that you know right. sometimes right. you got to put yourself out there of course we don't want to work for free as artists and musicians and anything else but sometimes you got it so back to the arts and the plaza thing so on a sunday a hot sunday you know i brought my stuff out there my pa i set up and um it was just a small collection of artists selling their paintings and uh maybe some other uh sculptures or or jewelry at the time it was the very beginning uh bob shanley was there and and um you know like johanna and and her people and the it's at the long beach art league the west end arts and um artists in partnership started arts in the plaza okay and uh I believe Kathleen Regan was a part of that as well. So shout out to all my friends. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. Uh, just forgive me. But um, so basically, I was so honored to to do that. So I came out there with my the same harmonica holder and harmonicas that I have here. This was in nice. I think 2010 or something like that. Um, and uh, I I played and I played for a couple of hours and uh, I played as much music as I could. I think Jaybird sat in with me then. I don't know if that was the first time I played with her or what, but um, there's even some videos up on my old YouTube. I have an older YouTube of that day. And from that day, the Herald came down, took pictures, and I was on the cover of the Herald like yes. soon after that. And um, they called upon me. And then that led to people getting to know me and then me getting more inspired to learn more songs and to, you know, I had a really, I did a, I actually wrote a song about September 11th on September 11th, the day it happened. Wow. It's called 5762. That was the Hebrew calendar year at the time. And it was, um, it was the Jewish new year of 5762. Um, and in the English title is who's going to pay this bill. Who's going to pay this bill. It's kind of like somebody ran out on the check, you know, and we were left with this disaster. We didn't know what we, I didn't know. Nobody knew who did it, what it was. It was the day of the disaster. So um, this song I recorded, it appears on a Good Times compilation from a few years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't played it in a while. I don't know. Maybe I'll play it now. But um, if, if I could even look up the words, it would be nice because I would often forget things. But. Who's going to pay this bill? The price of life. So many died. Who's going to pay this bill? Cry of war. Uh, no one knows. Uh, 50. Um, it, it, it's an intense song. Anyway, I wrote that one. I'll try to look it up so we can maybe play it. <laughs> but like I did that that day and this guy came out of the woodwork and he was like, you got to play that song for my friends, the police guys and the blah, 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 and the firemen and the, like, he was so into it. I mean, it, and like, I know he talked me up with a whole bunch of people and, and uh, you know, it was just, it's interesting how community back to community. It's like, I'm a real person. These people are real people. When people come up to you, you talk to them, you interact with them, you take their numbers, their names, you get them on the mailing list, you call them, you make, I've always been a promoter, a, a DIY guy. I vote do it yourself. Right. I've always been that. Um, just always my whole life. Um, the University of Miami, I learned how to, uh, well, even before that, Sachem High School, they had an after school program with Ray Sabatello ran and uh, it was a rock program. OK, and he would let your band sign up on, I think it was Tuesdays or something or Thursday or whatever it was after school, maybe both days. And he would set up his PA and he would let the bands come in and everybody would come after school and then they would have an after school bus for sports and everything. And the kids would take the after school bus home. Right. So this wow. is like a concert after school. And and this is how I started when I was 16, watching other people and then getting my band together. It was called Legacy and writing songs. And um, so we'd make flyers and we'd slap them up all over. We'd tell our friends, blah, blah, blah. So I learned how to promote then. Then I got to college and then it was like I booked a couple of gigs here and there with my uh, girlfriend at the time, Samara. And we had a, a duo called Ben and Samara and we played at like Borders Books and cafes in north miami uh, this place called cool beans we got on the radio uh, like an npr type of show we did like you know some other stuff and i learned how to promote like through that like how to book gigs and 
you know, I started learning. And then I did something called the Film Arts Revolution with two friends, mine, uh, Charles Kramer and uh, Sean Fleck. Both of them are still involved in film and doing crazy fun things. Um, and what we do is we'd show student films and improvise soundtracks to the films. And uh, we had this weekly party going at a place down the road and we promoted like crazy. We had flyers, we were telling everybody, we were calling everybody. Then, you know, and this was before cell phones or at least I didn't have a cell phone. Then I got to New York City. Uh, my first show was at Wetlands. Um, I had called up the booking agent to bring this far show to New York City. And I was a Long Island guy, an hour and a half out. I was living in Farmingville. I'd take in the Long Island Railroad all the way to the city, meet with clubs, go all the way back an hour and a half. It took me three hours just to travel. And wow. then, you know, and it was a lot of fun, right? I was learning. I had probably, I don't know what I had. If I had a cell phone, I had definitely some old thing, whatever it was. A, a beeper. Not even, a beeper. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally did have a beeper in the 90s. Um, and I had like a little address, electronic address book that you would run out of memory. You could only keep like 70 contacts or something. Anyway, I was just always, always promoting, always, you know, you, so now it's into the future. It's like, you just got to keep up on technology. Like I remember reading about having a website. Um, my friends in college were using email and I, I didn't know what it was, you know, like I didn't even know what it was. I had a typewriter in college. All right. So as, as the things kept going now, here we are, we're in this digital realm where um, we're, we're doing these shows online. Um, you know, we're, I'm teaching now. My whole business is being propped up by the online. It's, it's pretty amazing, you know, it's just what technology allows us to do. And I don't know, we talked that, that we're one global community now, right? And No uh, doubt, no doubt. You know, I had this idea that I'll just throw out there because, um, you know, like there's all these restaurants and they're trying to get the word out that they're doing takeout and delivery. And I thought it might be a great idea to pair musicians up with restaurants to promote that restaurant that night while they're doing the concerts. So Arts in the Plaza, you know, we need sponsors and we'd like to also help our sponsors that exist and bring in new people and promote new businesses. So, you know, even if you haven't been a sponsor and you're a local business in, in Long Beach or wherever you are, I mean, like, you know, this is the thing, like we could reach the world. I mean, people right. could people could Venmo stuff, PayPal, Zelle, right whatever um, they could send checks, they could. You know, just like promotion of the restaurant, even just by click and share, you know, share a live. Right. I did this a few times. My friends were online. They were they were performing. There was five people and I run some groups like live music groups. And I just had a watch party. I took the video that was going on and I brought it into another group and boom, there were 25 people suddenly of my friends watching another friend. And then I had to go and I just like. I made somebody else the host, you know, <laughs> right. if, if we could act unselfishly yes, and, yes. and put our egos Amen. aside Amen. and be like, oh, I'm going to help this other artist. It's not, it's not a competition of how many thousands or hundreds of people can, you know, it's like, right. we really got to help each other. And that's yes. com community right there. You know? Yes. And you know, this is the chapters rather this Ben one and you're really talking really well because this show um, I bonded in the last month and a half with people around the world, since we all share that common pandemic, this global tragedy that we're all going through. Each week I'm talking to people from Australia, England, um, Spain, Italy, um, Canada. So different, we're getting different perspectives around the world, but let's get another song out there. I know you wanted to do a tribute song. I wanna make sure we get that in. I don't know if that's the song you planned, but it seemed like yeah, you person... know what I'll do. I'll, I'm gonna do a song for my friend Gerard, okay. and then I would definitely like to do one before we get off. So please, sure. you know, let me know for sure. my uh, for the McNulty family who just lost uh, Kathleen. Okay? okay, so um, I'm gonna do one for um, for Gerard right now. Okay, this cool. is a song that he played, and uh, let's see. I usually do it <clears throat> a little differently. It's a Bob Dylan song. Oh, nice. How's the sound? Is it too good. loud? No, it's good. How many roads must a man walk down? 
down before you call him a man. How many seeds must the white dove sell before she sleeps in the sand? How many times must the cannibals fly before they are forever banned? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many times must a man look up before he can see the sky? And how many years must a man before he can hear people cry? How many deaths will it take till he knows too many people have died? The answer, my friend, blowing no in the wind. Gas is gone in the wind. How many years can a mountain exist before it is washed to the sea? How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head? Pretending he just doesn't see The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind The answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind Wonderful. That, you know, Benoit, you're such a, you know, you can play so many instruments. Can you rattle off all the different instruments you can play? <laughs> we got a half an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the guitar is my primary instrument. Uh, I always love mwah, the guitar. I started with the alto saxophone, uh, the classically trained. Actually, before that, I was the baritone horn, fourth wow. grade. I had the little tuba looking thing. Then I begged them, I'm like, please, can I play saxophone? They're like, no. And I was like, please, can I play saxophone? They're like, no. And then they let me play saxophone. And I practiced, and I joined the jazz band, and I got into jazz. Then I had this teacher. My mom paid for private lessons, right? So I had this teacher who told me that I should go to Stony Brook University, even though I was only playing for like a couple of months, and go to this jazz clinic run by Arnie Lawrence, who was one of the founders of the New School of Music in Manhattan. It was an International Association of Jazz Educators program at Stony Brook, and I was the youngest person there. I was 13, and uh, everybody was high school and college. Um, and I learned how to improvise jazz on the saxophone. And I was able to go to this bar in Patchog called Southwinds and play Thelonious Monk's Straight wow. No Chaser in front of my family. And that was the beginning of me playing in clubs when I was 13 years old. Plus, wow. my bar mitzvah, I got to play The Heat Is On with the band. And it was so good <laughs> the first time. The band leader guy said, everybody up on the floor. And they all danced to The Heat Is On. And that was the beginning <laughs> of my career on saxophone from, from those two gigs. Then I... Um, my sister had a guitar and um, it was laying around not being used. I, I grabbed it. I started teaching myself guitar and um, I had, you know, saxophone lessons. My mom paid for guitar lessons. My sax teacher told me, told her, um, Danny O'Reilly, he said he should really learn keyboard. So my mom bought me a keyboard, right? And I wanted a guitar. So she ended up buying me both of those things. Wow. Uh, I started writing songs. I put a band together. I started playing at that after school program. And then over time, um, I picked up different things. In college, I guess I picked up harmonica a little bit. I I picked up uh, the bass. The, the bass guitar is very much like the guitar. It's the um, first the thicker strings, the first four. So you can kind of, if you know guitar really well, you can kind of pick up bass and there is a stylistic difference, but you know, so I picked up the bass, uh, hand progression and stuff like that. And, you know, um, but then, you know, 
I started getting into uh, the ukulele or ukulele is called in Hawaii, but we call it ukulele, right? So um, I got into that through my friend Jeff Allen and we have the ukulele orchestra. I picked that up in like 2013 or something like that. Um, and we decided to do a master class at the Hub Billiards Club. And then we started doing uh, classes here in my studio every Tuesday since 2013. Okay, so like six, seven years now of Tuesday nights in my studio. Uh, we've gone on to do great things. Like we just played this thing at the Good Times, uh, had the um, ukulele festival at the Landmark Theater uh, for the Ukulele Kids Club charity. That went really well. Um, and so thanks to Rich for getting us involved in that. And also he asked me to be on the Long Island Music Business Association um advisory board we met once right before the coronavirus outbreak and it was like great meeting so we'll be on the lookout for that um so yeah instruments so i'll just rattle off a few more i play the um mandolin a little bit wow. i play the banjo a little bit i play the violin the viola the cello um uh, the clarinet a little bit i own all these instruments um wow. And I sing, I play drums. I have a full drum set. I teach that here. Um, trying to think, um, you know, accordion a little bit, you know, uh, melodica. Uh, yeah. Wow. I, I, you know, I play, I can play <laughs> the recorder. I can, I can play spoons. That's all I can play spoons. <laughs> spoons are good. I play the washboard. So okay. Sammy, when I met her, my wife, uh, shout out to my wife, who's the yeah, most She's great. I mean, tell her I said hi. I love Sammy. She's great. <laughs> sammyhoop.com <laughs> s-a-m-m-i-h-o-o-p.com that's sammy she and i met um when i was just jamming in the local bars uh specifically speakeasy next door which they opened up in 2007 the same month that i moved right here right next to speakeasy wow. okay in my studio anyway um and i met dave cowan there and i used to come, go all the way to brooklyn and play and come all the way back and then he'd st he'd be playing late night and i would grab my bass i go next door and i jam with him and my and my uh i bring my little dumbek drum and we'd we'd have a, a jam party his last set and somehow um i met sammy like one night there and we kindled our relationship we ended up getting married within the year and uh you know so it, it's Long Beach is incredible. And uh, Cabana is right there. I love Bob Johnson. And he's been so supportive of Arts in the Plaza. I have to specifically mention him. He's been supportive of the live music scene in general. And uh, we wish everybody good luck. You know, um, you know, everybody out there, you know, it's just, uh, again, it's hard to mention everybody. There's so many people that I could mention right now. I'm, I'm going to hold off because I don't want people to get jealous. But, you know, I play a lot of instruments. Um, I love what I do. I love teaching. I love teaching other people. I love opening up the eyes and the ears and the mind of like, you can do a many other instruments. Right. I have to shout out to Marina Nova. She's my teacher um, who works with me at Studio Noir. She's been such a huge asset addition to my world, our world. Um, she changes many lives, as, you know, like teaching. And she's learned a lot of instruments under me. And this is what I've learned to do is like each one, teach one. I love that expression, you know, um, teach a man, uh, you know, feed a man a fish. He could eat one night, teach him how to fish. He could eat over and over and over and teach others how to fish and eat over and over and over. Right. That's right. And, um, you know, that's that's with instruments. You know, that's knowledge. It's music knowledge. If you go to my YouTube site, there's a lot of free stuff. You can check out some of the things I teach for free. You could book lessons. Um, you can go to studionoir.rocks um, and you can uh, just throw in a student enrollment and, and I'll have your information if you want to be added to our mailing list and book a lesson, try one out. Um, I've done free lessons when COVID came out. When we were quarantined, um, I offered free lessons for the first couple of weeks. Um, group lessons uh, had a ukulele at 5.30 on Tuesdays and I was offering the ukulele orchestra for free. Some people took advantage, some people did not. Now we're back to regular pricing, but you know, I'm always willing to work with people, scholarship people, uh, exchange uh, things for lessons. You know, I need a lot of help um, in general. And um, you know, so anyway, um, I do want to play another song. So do you have any other questions or anything like that? Yeah, we're gonna, we're, you're gonna take us home with the final song. I think it's a tribute song. So uh, Ben Watt, uh, one more time, if they're just joining in, I know the uh, your website is scrolling on the bottom of the screen, but how can people, 
get a hold of you if they want to learn from you? You're a teacher, you're a musician, but one more time, how can people get a hold of you? You can, my number is 917-545-3833. You could always call me or text me. Um, Studio Noir, L-B-N-Y at gmail.com. Just search Benoit, B-E-N-O-I-R, or Studio Noir, two words, Studio Noir.rocks. Um, also, shout out to Reverb Nation. They've been like the best website for me. Um, ReverbNation.com slash Benoit. Um, and, you know, you know, that's it. I thank God. I thank my family. I thank you. I thank uh, everybody in Long Beach for being so cool and so welcoming of me and my family. And uh, I just look forward to, you know, getting through this and helping people and continuing to do what we do. And God bless America and uh, our leaders and, um, you know, everybody who serves. And um, I don't know, like the last song, it's kind of a, I have, I have a song called Will You Go Lassie Go. Um, it's, it's a Scottish ballad. It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, Ireland and Scotland. They're very close. And uh, I just love this song. I used to sing it a lot at the Irish Cottage. So this one's dedicated to Kathleen McNulty and the McNulty family. And anyone out there who's lost anybody, this one's also for everyone, okay? Um, the chorus is, and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain thyme all around the blooming heather. Will you go, lassie, go? So, um... Hope you guys enjoy this, all right? Oh, the summer time is coming, and the trees are sweetly blooming, and the wild mountains. In time goes around the blooming heaven. Will you go, Lassie? Go, and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain time all around. The blooming heaven. Will you go, Lassie? Go. I will build my love a tower near yon pure crystal fountain. And on it, I will build. All the flowers of the mountain Will you go, Lassie, go And we'll all go together To pluck wild mountain time All around the blooming heather Will you go, Lassie, go? If my true love she were gone, I would surely find another Where wild mountain time Rolls around the blooming heather. Will your old lassie go? And we'll all go together to block wild mountain time all around the Will you go, Lassie? Go. Benoit, I love you, brother. Thank, thank, thank you. you so, thank you so much. You, I think you just touched the lives of a lot of people with that tribute song, and you can probably relate to a lot of people that uh, are struggling during this tough, 
tough time. And we're going to have to get you back on the show real soon, okay? Thank you. This also, by the way, Kathleen gave me this shirt um, as oh, a gift. Wow. So I just wanted to thank her again. Wow. And uh, thank you, Stephen. I love you too. And uh, I hope yep. you guys out there um, stay safe and uh, stay connected. All right, man. Love you. See you down the road. All right. Thanks. Peace. All right.